Hello, you're watching Hornbill TV's top stories of the week. In some concerning news coming out from Nagaland this week, a minor girl aged approximately nine years said to have been living in the household of a church minister of Woka Town Baptist Church in Woka Town as a domestic helper was reportedly physically abused by the wife. This week, community organizations were protesting in the town. The accused has been identified as one Rosemary Izung, said to be a teacher at the Government Middle School of Longsa Village in Woka District. She is said to be the wife of an associate pastor of the church. Images purporting to show the victim with severe injuries on the hand, leg and bruises on the body was widely circulated on social media. Additional superintendent of Woka Police, Sorisa Quinka, said police personnel were dispatched along with the women's police in Woka after the authorities got information about the matter. Quinker said an FIR was lodged by the girl's father. Accordingly, the accused person was brought to the woman's police station for interrogation. Further, the minor was said to have been sent for medical treatment and examination. Quinker assured that the police would take legal action. He said the police department would register a case and deal with the matter with seriousness. The accused, identified as Rosemary Kikon, aged 39 and residing in Sumang A colony, was promptly apprehended and charged under sections 323 324, 354, 506 of the Indian Penal Code and Section 75 under the Juvenile Justice Act, the police informed. Further interacting with media persons at the sideline of state-level workshop on cyber safety and safety and security of children in schools, Social Welfare Secretary Martha R. Ritze said that the accused in this crime would be tried under the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act. As the Lok Sabha election approaches with Nagaland voting for the lone Lok Sabha seat on April 19th, the ruling National Democratic Progressive Party this week distributed the party's ticket to ex-MLA Dr. Chumben Muri at the party's headquarter at Chumgidma. Speaking at the handing over function program, Chief Minister Nipirio exuded confidence in the candidate and highlighted Muri's past experiences in the field of medical service and governance. Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patton, who was also present, spoke about the strong alliance between the NDPP and BJP and extended full support from his party to candidate. Mr. Muri then thanked Chief Minister Rio and the party for having confidence in him and giving him the party's ticket. He pledged to be a strong advocate for the Naga issues and assured to represent the voices of the people in the parliament. During the program, Chief Minister Nipi Rio also made a fervent appeal to the Eastern Nagaland People's Organizations to refrain from boycotting electoral processes, stressing the importance of dialogue and collaboration in resolving differences. Whereas Hayatung Tungo Lotha, an independent candidate, filed his nomination in the office of the Commissioner, Nagaland and returning officer in Koima, and also became the first candidate to file his nomination for this year's election. Congress' Supung Moran Jameer, who has been selected by the Congress for the polls in a press conference, said that he was contesting the election to deliver justice and equality to the Naga people. In the ensuing Lok Sabha elections, it will be a three-way contest between NDPP's Dr. Chumbin Muri, independent candidate Hai Thung Tungo, and INC Supung Moran Jameer. Some international news this week, Russian President Vladimir Putin, who extended his one-man rule by six years after clinching a predictable landslide win in the presidential elections without any serious competition, thanked the people who had come out to vote, saying the results of the elections will allow the Russian society to consolidate and become stronger. He also slammed Russia's top rival, the United States, as undemocratic and warned Western countries of World War III if their troops entered Ukraine. Putin won 87.8% of the vote, the highest ever result in Russia's post-Soviet history, according to an exit poll by pollster The Public Opinion Foundation. The outcome means that the 71-year-old president is set for a new six-year term that will see him overtake former Soviet leader Joseph Stalin and become Russia's longest-serving leader for over 200 years if he completes it. Most of Putin's opponents are either imprisoned, dead or have fled abroad. National turnout was 74.22% when the polls closed, surpassing 2018 levels of 67.5%, according to election officials. Thousands of Putin opponents protested at noon at polling stations inside Russia and abroad, and 74 people were arrested on Sunday in the country, according to OVD Info. Speaking on the election results on Monday morning, Putin said, it, the high turnout, 
in the election and high percentage of people who voted for Putin has to do with the dramatic events that the country is going through. It has to do with the current situation, with the fact that we have to literally fight with weapons, the interests of our citizens, our people, and create a future for the comprehensive, sovereign, and secure development of the Russian Federation and our fatherland. The United States, Germany, the United Kingdom and other nations have said the vote was neither free nor fair due to imprisonment of political opponents and censorship. Putin had spent years ruthlessly suppressing the Russian opposition and limiting resources for independent media. Communist candidate Nikolai Kharitonov finished second with just under 4%. Newcomer Vladislav Davankov third and ultra-nationalist Leonid Slutsky fourth partial results suggested. The Supreme Court this Tuesday sought the Narendra Modi government's response to a bunch of petitions seeking a stay on the Citizenship Amendment Act rules, fixing April 9th as the next date of hearing. In the meantime, there is no stay on the grant of citizenship even as some of the petitioners pressed for it. During the hearing, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for the government told a bench headed by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur that he needed some time to respond to the 20 applications which have sought a stay on the rules till the apex court disposes of the petitions challenging the constitutional validity of the citizenship amendment act 2019 on march 11th the center notified the ca rules four years after the law was passed by the parliament the ca aims to confer indian citizenship to persecuted non-muslim migrants including hindu sikhs jains buddhist parsis and christians who migrated from bangladesh pakistan and afghanistan and arrived in india before december 31st 2014 Several opposition parties have criticized the CA, calling it discriminatory, communal, and anti-constitutional. In a shocking incident, two children were murdered in Baba Colony near the Mandi Samiti outpost late Tuesday in Uttar Pradesh's Badaun. Heavy police have been deployed outside the house of the deceased children in Badaun. One of the accused was killed in retaliatory firing by the police. The surviving brother of the two deceased children and an eyewitness to the incident claimed that two people came to the house and took his brothers to the terrace. He also told ANI that the accused had tried to attack him, but he pushed him away and fled from there. The man from the barber shop had come here. He took my brothers upstairs. I don't know why he killed them. He tried to attack me too, but I pushed away his knife, pushed him away and ran down. I suffered injuries in my hand and head. Two people had come here, he had said. The father of the deceased children named has named Javed, brother of Sajid, as the main accused in his complaint on a basis of which a first information report was registered. Following the police action, one of the accused involved was killed in an encounter with the police. In his complaint, the father of the victim alleged that the accused had come to his house to collect some money and cited his wife's pregnancy. Further, the father of the deceased said that he didn't know why the two accused had killed his children. Speaking to NI, SSP Badon Alok Priyadarshi said that the deceased family has named the accused brother also, who is on the run. The accused Sajid entered the house yesterday at around 7.30 and went to the terrace where the children were playing. He attacked the two children and murdered them. Police team swung into action and got to know that the accused had escaped. The accused fired at the police and was killed in retaliatory fire. The mother weapon and the revolver have been recovered, he said. The State Bank of India has submitted all details of the electoral bonds with serial numbers to the Election Commission of India on the directions of the Supreme Court. SBI Chairman filed a compliance affidavit in Supreme Court saying that all details of electoral bonds, including the alphanumeric numbers, have been disclosed to the Election Commission. On March 21, 2024, the SBI provided disclosed all details of the electoral bonds which are in its possession and custody to the Election Commission of India. The affidavit of SBI states, Similarly, KYC details of purchases are also not being made public for security reasons apart from the fact that such information is not fed collated in the system. However, they are not necessary for identifying the political parties, the affidavit filed by bank chairperson Dinesh Kumar Khara said. The affidavit had said that the SBI has revealed information which will show the name of the purchaser of the bond, its denomination and specific number the name of the party that encashed it, the last four digits of the bank account number of political parties that redeemed the bond, and the denomination and unique number of the bond encashed. On March 21, 2024, the SBI has provided disclosed all details of the electoral bonds which are in its possession and custody to the Election Commission of India, it said. 
It is respectfully submitted that SBI has now disclosed all details and that no details other than complete account numbers and KYC details have been withheld from disclosure in terms of the directions contained in. The judgment dated February 15, 2024 read with order dated March 18, 2024 passed by this court, the affidavit said. On March 18, the Apex Court had told the ASBI to stop being selective and make complete disclosure of all details related to the electoral bond scheme by March 21st. The top court had said the details to be disclosed must include the unique bond number that would match the buyers with the recipient political parties. In a huge blow just before the elections to the Aam Admi Party, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal was arrested on Thursday, 21st March, by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with the alleged Delhi Lika excise policy scam. Earlier in the day, the Delhi High Court had refused to grant any interim protection from coercive action to the Aam Admi Party chief. Kejriwal had reportedly been, has reportedly been arrested under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. Two hours after the High Court's ruling, ED officials reached the residence of Delhi CM or Kejriwal for questioning, even as AAP workers staged a protest outside the house. After the arrest, the enforcement director produced Delhi Chief Minister Arvin Kejriwal in the Rouse Avenue Court on Friday and told the court that Kejriwal was the kingpin and the key conspirator of the Delhi liquor policy scam. Seeing a 10-day remand for the Chief Minister, ASG SV Raju, told the court that Kejriwal was involved in the use of the proceeds of the crime and was directly involved in the formulation of the policy. The excess policy was made in such a manner that it enabled the taking of bribes. Vijay Nair was the middleman between the Aam Admi Party and the South Cartel, a key exponent of which was K. Kavita, already arrested. The ED told the court that Vijay Nair was staying near Kejriwal's house and was closely working with the chief minister who demanded kickbacks from liquor barons for extending favours under their policy. Kejriwal demanded rupees 100 crore from some accused from the South Group for the Punjab election, the ED told the court. The agency also said Kejriwal himself met with Kavita and said they should work together on the liquor policy. The proceeds of the crime were not only rupees 100 crore, but the profit made by the bribe givers was also the proceeds of crime. All vendors paid cash to a certain extent, the ED said. Proceeds of crime of about rupees 45 crores received from the South Group were used by Aam Admi Party in the Goa campaign in 21, 2022. ED said they have corroboration of everything they are saying. A huge amount of cash changed hands, ED said. Kejriwal is also liable for the role of his associates. The agency said Goa MLA said that they received cash. Terror ran high in Russia last night as the Islamic State group, also known as ISIS, has claimed responsibility for a brutal attack on Moscow's Krokus city hall resulting in the deaths of at least 60 individuals and the injury of over 145. However, recent updates st state that the death toll has risen to at least 115 and has left 187 injured. At least five gunmen in camouflage attire wielding atom automatic weapons stormed the crowded con concert hall in the city's western suburbs on Friday night during a gathering to watch the veteran rock band Picnic. They indiscriminately fired into the audience and triggered explosions, igniting a massive fire. The ISIS-affiliated news agency Amak via Telegram published a brief statement where the terror group's Afghan branch, ISIS-K, asserted responsibility for the attack. Latest updates state that at least 11 suspects have been apprehended so far, although the group did not furnish evidence to substantiate their claim. The emergency situation ministry reported that the fire services facilitated the escape of around 100 individuals through the concert's hall's basement. Task News Agency confirmed the safe evacuation of all members of the picnic group. Rescue efforts were initiated for individuals trapped on the roof. This attack showcasing ISIS-K's ruthless capabilities heightened geopolitical tensions, notably amidst Russia's strained relations with the West following the 2022 Ukraine invasion. Meanwhile, President Vladimir Putin extended wishes for a swift recovery to the wounded victims as conveyed by Russia's Deputy Prime Minister after the meeting on Saturday. However, Putin has yet to publicly address the attack. This assault occurred shortly after Putin's landslide victory in the recent elections that marks the deadliest incident witnessed in Russia in recent years. Ukraine vehemently denied any involvement in the attack, while Moscow's mayor, Sergei, labeled it a profound tragedy. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and French President Emmanuel Macron also denounced the attack. And those were the top stories of this week. See you next time. Goodbye.